and welcome to my vegan experiment. My name is Kat and today I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about scuba diving. As you know, this channel is about veganism, scuba diving, conservation, zero waste, and all things like that. If these are things you're interested in, please feel free to subscribe and click the bell icon so you can keep up to date with all the videos. Anyway, let's get into it. So, scuba diving instructor. I became a diving instructor at 18 and if you want to hear more about my scuba diving story just click up here. I've made a whole separate video on this. Today I wanted to talk to you more precisely about what you would need if you do want to become a diving instructor and get the epic lifestyle which comes along with it. So we're going to cover what skills you exactly need, what qualifications, what kind of mental state. So first things, the very basic things you need to become a diving instructor is you need a uh, hundred dives, you need to be a minimum of 18 years old because you do have a lot of responsibility, and you need to have first aid course. And during your instructor course, you're actually going to do an emergency first responder course as well. So these are the very baselines. I became a diving instructor when I was 18, 18 and 10 months, I believe, to be precise. Now that does not mean I started diving just at that point. I had been diving from the ages of 13, 14, so I already had quite a bit of experience under my belt. Now I think this is the most important thing about if you do want to get into diving instructing, Understand that just like with any type of instructing or teaching, you want to have experience which goes beyond just uh, the classroom. You want to have dived in many different locations around the world in different conditions. For example, I dived in Egypt, which was very calm waters, but the language was quite unfamiliar to me there. I dived in Thailand, where the currents were sporadic and came out of nowhere, and visibility changed quite drastically. I dived in Finland, where I was in a dry suit, the temperature was somewhere around 5-6 degrees in the water, and there was no visibility whatsoever. And then I dived in Australia as well, which was perfect aquarium diving with hardly any current at all. Having a range of different dive conditions that you've experienced makes you ready to deal with anything that might happen when you're teaching. When you teach diving, you're responsible for up to eight people who had never been underwater before. Now, going underwater for the first time is quite a stressful experience for some people. I would say one out of four of my students do panic and try and swim to the surface at some point. Now, this usually happens at the very, very beginning in the pool when they first clear their mask, but by talking to them beforehand and warning them of this and then having a chat to them afterwards about the importance of dealing with issues underwater will help minimize this number. But I'm saying a large amount of people panic and freak out. So you need to be beyond comfortable in the water, underwater, in your gear, so you are able to keep these people safe. If something goes wrong at depth, things can go really wrong. And if there is anything which is causing you discomfort or if you haven't had, you know, an archive of dives, it might prove to be more challenging and overwhelming. That's why the minimum amount of dives they do say is 100. Now, this is all relative to what type of diver you are. I was around the 100th dive uh, during my instructor development course. My friend Robin was also around the hundredth dive, but I know many people wait until they have a couple hundred or even a thousand dives before they take the step to professional diving. This is a completely individual thing, just like with any sport in the world, any skill, people learn things at different rates and people get comfortable at different rates. Robin and I, at this point, our boss wouldn't have let us go through the whole process if he didn't feel we were ready, but we felt we were ready and we were comfortable enough and we were knowledgeable enough and with a few years, we both had about four years of diving experience up until that point that we could um, safely take on the challenge of being a diving. So yeah, so definitely recommend having experience in different places, different conditions before you do tackle uh, the instructor development course. The other thing is, of course, you need first aid training. You get some first aid training during your rescue course course, which is the third level. Oh yeah, I didn't mention. So you first you're going to need to get your open water course. I'm talking about Patty since Patty is what I know about. Patty is what I am. Open water course, 
advanced open water course, and then your rescue course, and then your dive master course, which is the first level of professional diving. And the best thing you can do for a dive master course is to get some sort of internship style course so you can actually learn by learning from your mentor rather than a much shorter course which uh, they, they just smash it out in two, three weeks. Uh, again, there is a video all about these courses up and you can just click on that. So you need the very basic of these courses and you need first aid. You, you're going to have to do an emergency first responder course probably during the same time as, as your instructor development course where you're going to have to be able to not only perform first aid but teach first aid. Everything from CPR, bandages, first response in especially dive scenarios, so decompression illness, if you touch fire coral or if you happen to step on a stonefish, things like this, you're going to have to be comfortable. Then you also need a dive medical. Now, every year as dive professionals, we have to go through a full body dive medical, which tests our lung capacity, our hearing, our eyesight, our blood pressure, and a chest x-ray. In the instructor course itself, it's usually about two weeks of brutal kind of uh, learning. It's an exponential curve and you're going to have to be a confident speaker because you're going to need to teach people in a pool setting, in a classroom setting, as well as an ocean setting. In terms of practical skills, in terms of your level of diving, you need to be so comfortable underwater that you can definitely swim just about anywhere without your mask. If anyone has an emergency, you have to be comfortable dealing with it and knowing what to do. Gear is very important that you know how it functions. Some quick tips and hacks on how to fix it in case there is a problem with the gear on the boat. You need to have your emergency oxygen provider, which is how to administer O2 in case a dive accident does happen. So those are kind of the, the practical aspects. Now in terms of your personality, teaching diving is an extremely social, you're, you're in the entertainment industry. People come to you to gain a new hobby, so you do need to have positive personality. I don't know, go back to school for a day. So it's very important to have a positive personality and to be patient. A lot of people struggle not only with the maths and physics in the theory aspect of the courses, but they also struggle with just putting their heads underwater and breathing from a regulator for the first time. It's important for us to go before this threshold concept of actually diving and remember the first time you put your head underwater and breathing our instinct is to stop breathing when we're underwater so to retrain our body to really breathe through our mouth through this contraption and then trusting a contraption that you don't know anything about is quite stressful to a lot of individuals so being patient and being able to deal with many different personalities when you teach diving, you can teach anyone from the age of 8 in the bubble maker course to 80 or 90. Uh, depends if they all pass their medicals. You need to also be strict in case um, if, if your students do break the rules because if they do, I mean the potential outcome is death. So it's very important to, to stick to your guns. And even if you're young, you know, and little in stature, and a girl, and blonde, and you know, you think all the prejudice is against you, you need to stand your ground and to tell that person, hey, no, you have to keep breathing, or hey, no, don't jump off the boat before I tell you to, or make sure to do your buddy checks. You gotta stand your ground, because at the end of the day, you are responsible for these people's lives. Now, if you do choose to go down the path of being a scuba diving instructor, it is one of the most rewarding experiences one of the most rewarding things I have ever done. Being able to share my passion and my love for the ocean with people and seeing their eyes light up every time I show them something new. I've taken people to see manta rays and turtles and Christmas tree worms and nudie branches and everyone is excited by a different thing. The, the happiness that people experience after their first open water dive is just unparalleled and the gratitude uh, they have to you. My diving instructors changed my life and I will forever remember the course, I will forever remember their names and I hope that my students feel a similar way about me um, and that partially because of me and partially because of my love for the ocean and conservation they are that little 
a step closer to understanding the importance of this beautiful underwater world that we have the privilege to explore. And I am a very strong believer the more people we share diving with and the more people we help fall in love with the ocean, the more of them will care and try and protect it. Especially nowadays where just about anywhere you dive you're going to find trash, you're going to find plastic. Out of sight, out of mind very much applies to this entire plastic issue because if you're underwater and you're seeing this plastic it's all of a sudden not out of sight. So the next time that you're making a choice between buying something packaged in plastic and something not packaged in plastic you might make that connection and actually buy the thing which is not packaged in plastic. So yeah, scuba diving is a fantastic job. You get to travel the world with it. You're never gonna become rich, but you are going to love what you do. If you have any more questions about anything to do with scuba diving, please let me know. I've been an instructor now four years? I've been an instructor for almost five years. Or five years now that you're watching this video. That's insane, so five years of being instructor uh, I wouldn't trade it for the world. But yeah, I'm currently in the Comoros, as you guys might know, I'm doing a lot of teaching diving, but I'm also working on projects to help eliminate plastic or decrease the amount of plastic on the island. So cleaning up the beaches and cleaning up the oceans. If you do want to help with this project, you can either, one, buy one of these awesome t-shirts. Look at it. It's an orca filled with plastic because plastic is the killer. 